Okay, uh, today I've just installed the um, Ames Pure uh, sine wave um, inverter. It's just a DC to AC inverter. I believe it's got a 4,000 or 5,000 surge. Turn on that light. Um, anyway, it is a beefy, heavy piece of machinery. That is a heavy, heavy, heavy sucker. Anyway, just uh, looking forward to trying this out now that I've uh, um, gotten rid of this old, uh, I just put it away, um, just a real cheap modified sine wave inverter. I was having all sorts of trouble with it. Was, uh, it was going into uh, low voltage disconnect constantly. And Anyway, also got a couple more things here. Um, I picked this up um, from Insupra. These are grid tie inverters, unlike this inverter, which simply converts the DC power from your solar and your wind or from your battery bank and uh, converts that into usable 120 volt AC. These are grid tie. These will do the same thing, take that same DC current, hundred um, same uh, DC current, and from your wind and sun and invert it to 120 volts except this will take that and put that right back into the grid directly into the grid that's called a grid tie inverter uh, i've had a lot of good um success so far with these in supra grid tie inverters um they don't heat up uh, i'm going to run a couple of videos on them i think in the coming weeks um, and some just a little more in depth review, but they are working great. As I said, this one's a thousand watt um, grid tie inverter, and this is their 500 watt uh, GTI plug in. Um, so, anyway, I'm going to run some tests, but first, I'm going to turn on my, my new uh, heavy duty Pure Sign Ames Pure Sign uh, inverter. So safety precautions before I started working on this stuff. Uh, I knock out my my um, pullable fuse. This uh, is where my solar panels come in from. I can put that back in. Also had my wind braked. That way that prevents it from spinning and creating any current that could uh, electrocute me. Um, also turned off this transfer switch, which allows me to direct where I take my current, whether it goes to the GTI or to the battery bank, and from the battery bank I can run off it from, from this inverter. So I can put that back into my grid tie position. And lastly, I've got, this is my um, uh, battery disconnect. This will disconnect me completely and every other component completely from my deep cycle, whoops, deep cycle, um, uh, six volt batteries. These are two, uh, batteries run in series, and those back ones are run in series to make 12 volts, and then they're run in parallel to make one big 12 volt battery with two, with 464 amp hours. I want to add to this, but, uh, anyway, um, we're actually having a planned, um, our city is, is, uh, Electric company is going to be shutting down for an entire day. We've got a planned power outage, so I look forward to testing this out. That's why I wanted to get this pure sine wave inverter up and running. So let's, without further ado, let's turn on the battery. Now that'll bring everything back online. It should. Oh, there we go. There's my lights for my charge controller. And it looks like the, the inverter's on. That clock radio would not be on. So that's good. Looks like that's working. Um, yeah, you can see the lights on that. And they actually give you this remote control. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Got a little antenna. Looks like it's got an on-off button. So that's good because you know these things will use power. They'll draw power. So you generally don't want to have these inverters sitting there running and consuming power unless you're really using them. Um, so anyway, let's try to turn this off. Let's see if it shuts off. Hmm. Off. Oh, 
voila <laughs> pretty cool be interesting to see if this will work from upstairs in my house in my garage Come on. so anyway uh, look forward to running some tests and uh, seeing how this performs um, but this is a pure sine wave inverter unlike the modified sine wave a pure sine wave is is uh, pretty much identical to the um, alternating current that's produced in your house um, very clean um, wave clean sine wave whereas a modified is more of a square kind of chopped in fact they call them square uh, inverters too but um, anyway looking forward and in sensitive equipment and computers and things like that really have problems with these modified with the uh, modified sine waves so it's another reason for this so anyway look forward to testing this out and uh, also posting my videos up on my um, end phase units I'm going to be doing a major installation beginning tomorrow on these end phase units and I'll post up a whole series on the from everything from the installation on the rail mounts the Iron Ridge rail mounts to these to um, final connection in my main um, which I will be doing all myself so I look forward to that I actually got the permit so should uh, this shit hopefully goes well. So, anyway, thanks for watching. So, I'm actually now looking at the Ames inverter, and uh, this is the watt that's being drawn off it, um, which I am not too excited about. My, um, this is my uh, uh, trimetric here, and it's telling me I'm pulling 28. Um, watts now I can take fiber off because I know the charge controller uses about five so this aims 2000 watt pure sign is uh, drawing 23 watts so that's a lot you know what I'm not too happy about that um, I know it's a much better inverter than your modified but uh, yeah, it's something to consider that's a big draw I'm using my remote. Now I'm upstairs. You saw that remote from the inverter. I'm curious if this will, uh, how, how long this will go. This will be able to turn it off, but let's find out. The garage is actually below me. I'm in upstairs. Oh, look at that. Just hit the off button, and it went right back down. Now that's the draw from my charge controller. Well, it is pretty good to know that I at least can control this from this little remote control, which looks like it's got a little keychain thing here, too. So, something happens, power goes out. In fact, when we have this planned power outage uh, in a couple of days, um, I can use this just when I need it. I don't have to run it. So, that's, I guess, the only, uh, the only saving grace here is that I actually have the ability very easily to click that on and voila run off it in fact i'll take you in my other room and show you how i have this set up i, ha I haven't run any um i haven't hooked my inverter into any dedicated um uh, onto my existing um um circuits on my on my sub or my main i'm actually ran an extension cord that comes in, it's actually not this orange one you're looking at, that's in there for another reason. You see this white power strip here? This comes in from the outside. In fact, you can see the wire, that black wire, that comes in from the outside. And it runs right into this strip. And this power strip is being powered off my battery bank. So, I can take my to take my TV. I'll plug something into it here. Let's see. Where's my take this for my TV? And if I'll plug this into it, I can plug anything I want and this will be powered up off my sorry there. Off my uh, inverter. It's a new inverter. Can we turn on the TV? Okay, let's get it power up. 
This is a 40 inch, I believe it's a 40 inch Sony Bravia. Okay. There it is. All right. Well, we know the inverter works. In fact, let's go see the draw that this TV's got. I showed you before the uh, inverter is drawing, you know, a good 25 watts or something there. So now you throw the TV on, and we're at 263 watts. So TV's to, let's see, 240. 240-ish um, is what my TV runs. That's a, that's a lot. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a real lot for a television. But it's pretty cool. Now I'm going to shut it off. Let's see. One fell swoop. This will shut off the inverter in the garage, which will in turn shut off my TV in the living room, which will in turn drop this load off my battery. Straight down to the bare minimum of about four or five watts, which is my charge controller. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's probably not that interesting to most of you out there, but um, anyway, I'm excited about it. <laughs>